Hey everyone, how's it going? So what am I working on now? Well, I got a 2015, yeah, it's a 2015, Toyota Sienna. And customer broke down on the road, started making a really bad noise. And it turns out it's the water pump letting go. So we're gonna be re replacing the water pump on this. I don't recall ever doing one on one of these. However, it calls for an awful lot of time to do a pump on one of these. And some of the labor times tell you you got to drop the cradle, lower the motor, the whole nine yards. I don't know. We're going to see what's involved in getting this done. But let me show you what we got. So right here, I took the engine cover off and I had a decorative cover on it. See, there was a mouse under there at some point. But the water pump is down there. And if you look closely, you can actually see some coolant, like on top of the mount area there, like where that, or not mount, where the bracket sits. So there's coolant that's been spraying around. But we're gonna have to get to that. I'm gonna put this up in the air. I'm gonna start investigating a little bit, see what's involved. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I think what we're gonna start with is taking this upper mount out and getting some clearance that way. But what I'm gonna do is I'll go, uh, I'll show you as I come across things and how we're gonna go about doing this. Hopefully they didn't overheat it. I don't think they did. I think they started hearing a noise and pulled over. So, all right, let's uh, let's get cracking with this and see where we wind up. Okay, so up in the air, obviously pulled the front wheel off on this side. There's a shield that goes here, I pulled that off. And as you can see, the belt has actually jumped a tooth or a cog on the pulley there. And you can see it's actually rubbing into the pump itself. But you can see the stainage everywhere from the pump. Uh, so right now it's the easiest time to break those water pump pulley bolts free those 13s or 12s I think they're 12s it's Toyota uh, one thing we're gonna be doing also is we're gonna be putting a new belt on this that's for darn certain um, so yeah let me start doing that and then we're gonna look into what's involved here I do think you got to lower the cradle though to get this thing out because I don't think there's enough room between the frame rail to do this all right let's crack those three so I just want to show you this so I got the bolt or I got the wrench on the bolt here and this is how you're gonna break them free but just look real quick you see all the movement in the pulley see it I think it's shot all right I can't film this and break these free at the same time let me get this done and as I suspected, there is not enough room to get this out. So we are going to have to lower the cradle. Um, on a situation like this, what I will do is I will lower the cradle on this side. I'll take these brackets off from this end, leaving this end on. Same thing up here. And then loosen the center bolt to start letting this side of the cradle down. I'm going to have safety jacks and stuff like that underneath here. Uh, but yeah, let me start doing that because hopefully I can get enough clearance to do this. The other thing too is we wanted to change the tensioner. And as you see, the tensioner actually is part of the AC compressor mounting setup. So let's go that route and see where we wind up. All right, so back under the hood, the upper mount here, you just take that out. It was three bolts on this end and one bolt on that end. No big deal. Comes right out. Take this bracket out here. I've never done one before, so I'm thinking this is what I need to do. And then I believe this motor mount support bracket has to come out and i think it's just a 14 down here a 14 here and a 14 here which looks like you can probably have to wrench them all out so um i do have the cradle loose so i have a jack underneath there holding it up as far as it'll go right now um so i can actually manipulate it a little bit to get that bolt out in case that bolt has to come underneath those lines but let me get those bolts off and see what happens so it turns out there are six bolts that hold this thing in, and the two bottom rear ones are a real pain in the neck. I have the motor, I got the mount out on the bottom on that side, and I got the motor jacked up a little bit, and I was able to finagle these bolts out in between the AC lines and the brake lines. You do have to bend the AC lines a little bit to get them out, but they did come out, or the bolts came out, I should say. So now, how does this bracket come out? AC lines a little bit out of the way. 
There's a bracket here you got to undo. Let me move the big line out of the way. I can't do it single-handedly though, so hang on a second. Okay, so I moved the lines over and then the bracket comes up and out because that bottom part there has to get around that housing there. Yahoo. All right, so now I got to figure out what to do next and how to do it. Okay, so the next step is we're going to have to take this water pipe out here because it sandwiches the water pump in between um, the block. Uh, I believe it's a thermostat housing too. So I got the clamp out of the way. I can't stand Toyota clamps. I think they're terrible, but they hold. Um, so that's out of the way. So now let's get the hose off and I'm going to unbolt this and move this out of the way. All right, so there's three bolts. There's, well, two bolts and a nut. There's a bolt on top, bolt on bottom, and then there's a stud, which you can actually see the stud sticking out there because I popped that off now, um, these three. So once that's off, this thing will pop off the O-ring. It might get stuck on that O-ring that's there, but then you want to separate this pipe here or this hose from the, from the end of this. At least get this thing out of your waist. So you're not fighting with it. So let me work on that. Okay, that was simple. A little pressure. Pop that off, and then this comes out. We should probably be getting a thermostat for this thing too, considering I haven't gotten any coolant out of this motor yet. I don't like that. Okay, so with that out of the way, I'm gonna have to take that idler pulley out of the way. I think I got a new one anyway. Um, I'm not sure what Robert ordered. Yes, I do have one. I just looked on the bench. Um, yes, yeah, so we're gonna take the idler pulley out of the way because there's a bolt hidden behind it. And we gotta get the tensioner off too. And the tensioner is sandwiched between the AC compressor and the block. So Yahoo, that's gonna be fun. Um, but it should be just unbolt the compressor and move it out of the way. I don't think I have to draw down the AC system or anything like that. So, um, all right, let's go that route and see what happens. All right, so with that idler out of the way, it was just a 14 millimeter bolt came right out. Just be mindful there's a washer on the back side of it right there that fell and hit the floor. So just be mindful when you're putting it back together that you don't forget to put that washer in place. A little bit of uh, assembly lube or something will hold that to the pulley. But now, as you can see, you can see the back side of the water pump, which is this right here, which you couldn't see before because it was blocked by that pulley. All right, let's put this up in the air. All right, so the cradle's hanging down now, as you can see. I got a nice gap in here. Uh, but I still can't get the pulley off. There's not enough room. It's not coming down far enough. I don't feel like letting this thing down any further. I took the pulley off of the tensioner. It's a reverse thread, so you go opposite direction to get it off. So it's righty-loosey, lefty-tighty. Um, and then I should be able to get to all the bolts I need to get to on the pump itself. So, but let's find out. Let's start taking it off. Because it looks, I might have to get a couple up from up top. I don't know yet. Let's start taking some bolts out and see what we got. What I did do is I disconnected the sway bar end link because I realized that I got the cradle at an angle that I couldn't get more of an angle out of it because the sway bar was hanging it up. So I took the sway bar end link off and I was able to get it down further now and get the pulley out. So as you can see, I'm getting the bolts out. There's one up top there, a little bit of a trick to get to, but it's not terrible. So I'm gonna get those out and then those three and it should come out. Okay, I got the last bolt out and it pretty much fell out. Let's see this thing, it's been rubbing on the back there, but can you see that move? That's hammered. <laughs> that is shot. All right. As I always say, reverse procedure to install. I grabbed a new one. All right, so I'm just about to wrap up this part for today. Um, so I'm gonna bolt the new pump up. The gasket surface there, really all I did was wipe that down with a rag. You don't wanna go nuts and use those uh, Roll lock discs and stuff like that because they do scratch and they can leave leak points. So just be mindful of that. So here I have the new pump, new gasket. So this is all going to go together. All I'm going to do, like I said, is bolt this up and that'll be it for the day. So let me get this in place. Oh, and one thing that's a little tricky is you kind of got to hold the gasket, I'm thinking, to the pump like this and just get it up in place and then start catching bolts. Now here is something quite interesting I wanted to show you. Some of these bolts that go through the water pump go through the timing cover and into the block itself. So they have actually gray silicone that was used on the timing cover. It's still wet in the threads. 
the gray silicone is still wet. I don't know if I can show you, but I, yeah, there, you see it on my glove? Why is that? Well, if you think about it, it's just like in the tube, there's no air there. So most likely it stays wet, you know, especially if it's a large amount. Surprise still from 2015, because this thing, as far as I could tell, has never been apart. So just kind of interesting. I have seen that before, it's just kind of odd. And I mentioned it before, if you ever get silicone that's stuck on the ends, you, like you get little, like a little nipple of silicone stuck on the end, clean it off, just knock it off. Because that can actually hydraulic as you put it in, and it can actually break the cast aluminum. Okay, so all the screws that I gotta worry about for now are all in place. As you see, everything is still loose. So everything's installed loose. So now you can start tightening it up. When you tighten it up, start from like a center point here and don't go full tight right off the bat. Bring it down so that in th this way it just stops moving and then do them all like that. And start in a circular fashion and work your way out. Um, do that first and then go back over them all and tighten them one more time. Like actually bring them to what torque spec should be. Now I've actually been asked this question before in a situation like this where you have smaller bolts like these 10 millimeter headed, the uh, six millimeter bolts themselves. Um, you have these and then you have the larger bolts like this, which are 12 millimeter headed. Which ones do you tighten down on first? Usually I will do the smaller ones first, but like I said, just go down lightly till it stops moving and do it all the way around in a circle, circular fashion and then do the larger ones. Basically you're doing the ones that are closer to the center of the pump first. Don't start on one end and all of a sudden work your way to the other, you're gonna wind up with a leak. Uh, okay, yeah, so I did all the 10s so far, and now I'm going to do the 12s, then I'm going to go over and do all the 10s again and tighten them, then I'm going to do the 12s and tighten those. Alright, so I brought them all down by hand, that was the last one there, so everything's good. I made it good and tight by hand, I'm not going to stick a torque wrench up there. Use your brains when you're tightening it up. If you notice, I pulled the crank, uh, the harmonic balancer off. It was just a big center bolt, and then the whole thing slid off. Didn't have to use a puller or anything on that. I just did that to give myself a little more room, make my life a little bit easier. Uh, all right, so that's actually going to wrap it up for today. I'll get back on this tomorrow morning. All right, so I wound up pulling a compressor out. I had to pull the lower bolts out of the um, alternator and slide it forward a bit. So this way I could get all the bolts out for the tensioner to take the tensioner out. Now, one of the studs here... This is for the AC compressor, went into here. So you need a inverted Torx to get this out. A Little bit of a pain in the neck. You could have, I could have probably worked with it like this with the compressor in the way to get it out, like in case you're doing this in your driveway. But instead of me fighting with the compressor, I just hooked the AC machine up to it and sucked the whole thing down. This way I could take the compressor right out. Um, so pretty much that's it. Reverse procedure to install. If I run into anything out of the ordinary, I'll show you. All right, let me get this back together. Okay, so everything's going together smoothly. Now here's the thermostat housing. I installed a new thermostat. As you see, this thermostat has this little check valve-ish kind of thing. Basically, it's to help get air bubbles out. Always make sure you put that at the 12 o'clock position or pretty darn close to it. So that's the old one. And there's the new one inside there. And if you look close, you could just see that hole that I'm talking about. An old trick that used to be... Uh, that the old timers like me used to do, well, old timers like me, I learned it from an old timer, is um, thermostat housing used to drill a small hole in it, this way air could pass through it. Uh, this way you get the air bubbles out. Um, yeah, so the O-ring that goes on here, <coughs> basically I got tranny assembly gel holding it in place. Yeah, you can use silicone if you wanted to. Um, I prefer tranny assembly gel, doesn't really matter. It's just gonna contact that surface. And then that surface there is going to go on that O-ring there. So I had already taken some of that training assembly lube and I lubed it up a little bit. So this way it'll all slide together. That is a new O-ring on there. So let's get this on there and everything, like I said, is going together pretty smoothly. All right, so that's all together now. I put a gallon of coolant in and then a gallon of water in there. This thing has a bleeder in the back. Crack open the bleeder, wait till the coolant starts coming out, and it did. Should have left a little bit of a puddle down there. It did. You can actually see it inside the tip of the bleeder. You don't have to go bananas tightening those things up. As soon as you get them tight, just go a little snug. Stop. I've seen people over tighten them. I've seen people snap them off. Um, oh, the other thing too is don't open those when the vehicle's running. You open them when they're running, you suck in air. It's not a pressure side. It's a suction side, usually. 
99 times out of 100, it's a suction set, so you will suck air in there. So don't do that. Um, only when they're sitting still like this, not running. So that's it. Um, I'm going to add a little more water to it, and then we're going to start it up. All right, so you see I got a little bit of water in there. So let's start it up. Then I'm going to add some coolant to that. I'm just going to add straight up coolant. That's fine. Because um, all I have is a concentrate. But let's start it and see what happens. Everything should be good, I'm assuming. Uh, and this is a push start. So hang on one second because I cannot get into this thing right now the way it is on the lift. This thing won't fit in there. Hang on. All right, so basically I wound up pushing the brake pedal with the uh, pry bar there and then reached in and hit the push to start. All right. So I'm going to add some straight-up coolant to the overflow there, uh, let it burp for a second. Um, but I think we should be all good here. Uh, I still got to put the wheel on. I got to put the side shield on down there. I got to put the under shield on. That thing right there. So, uh, yeah, let's get going with all that. And there we go. Everything's all good to go. Get ready for the road test. Make sure the coolant was topped off. Topped it off in there. And uh, yeah, so now we're going to close the hood. One thing, when you're doing something like this, check your other fluids. How hard is it to check oil at this point? I already did that. Oil's fine. Uh, but always check it. You don't want somebody to leave and all of a sudden they check their oil later on and say, oh, wow, there's nothing on the stick. You couldn't check it while you had my car? So, just something to think about. Um, all right, yeah, let's go on a road test. Okay, so the road test went smooth. I had, like, no heat for a period of time, and then all of a sudden I got heat, which tells me there was an air bubble in this. Um, I just double-checked the coolant just now, and the levels seem fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to park this, I'm going to let it sit, let it get cold, and then recheck it in the morning. Uh, a little dirt on my forehead. It's just, just a wrinkle. Anyway, um, so, yeah. We're going to do that, let it sit overnight, and it should be fine in the morning. But that's pretty much it for now. Uh, if you're getting something out of my videos, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.